Shalom, Shalom. Back again with another live lesson to uh, finish uh, the series I've been dealing with, dealing with uh, Lucifer. This is uh, part two. I'd like to say Shalom to the elect of the house of Israel. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Barshem, Yahweh Shai Barshem, Kakwadash for giving us this uh, knowledge and truth. This wisdom, this understanding. Waiting for uh, waiting for you, brothers and sisters, to come on in. Let me know how the sound is. Uh... Okay, shalom to you, uh, brothers, as well as you, uh, uh, sisters of the household of faith. Let me know if the sound is good. Loud and clear, okay. Okay, good. So, we got a lot of scriptures to go through. We got a lot of scriptures to go through. So, um, I'm just going to jump right into it. So, to recap, the last lesson, I stopped at around uh, the ninth verse in the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter. So, I'm going to continue from there. All right, to recap the last lesson, I went into the word Lucifer, broke down the word from the Latin, which literally means light carrier or light bearer. And I proved that Esau has his own light, which is the light of wickedness. By the way, that's the same light that Esau gave to Eve in the garden. He was that serpent that taught Eve the knowledge of wickedness. Eve took that knowledge of wickedness and gave it to Adam. And we, you know, we fell as a nation. That's why the scripture have said, of the of women come the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Okay. Because the serpent lied to Eve. The serpent told Eve, No, you, you uh, the most I said you're gonna die, but uh, no, you ain't gonna die. That's what the serpent said. The serpent said, No, you're not gonna die. The serpent said, You're gonna be as gods, you're gonna know both good and evil, which proves back then. Adam only knew uh, good. He didn't know evil. Why would the serpent tell uh, Eve, you're going to know good and evil? Okay? Which evil is what? Evil is a mixture of good. Evil is good corrupted. Okay? What's a lie? A lie is a, is a, is a, a corruption of the truth. That's what a lie is. A bending of the truth. In other words, you can't have a lie if you don't have the truth. The two go hand in hand. So we had to learn both both sides. Goes back to what Elder High Priest Yaquav used to always say. We had, we had to learn wickedness in order to appreciate righteousness. Okay? So yeah, so what we're proving here is uh, Lucifer is uh, Esau, so-called white man, really starting with the top banking families. And the thing is, the Edomites, the lower level Edomites that die on this side, they're going to be born to the, you know, born through the top wicked elite. They're going to come back through the top wicked elite. So that's how they're going to go. All of Esau, Edom is going to go into slavery. Okay, so the Edomites that die on this side, they're going to come back through the ones that make it. And that's going to be the top banking families. Okay, they're going to have their children and their children are going to be the Edomites that died on this side. Just like the two-thirds that die on this side, they're going to come back through the one-third, all right, the elect that make it. So it's a beautiful thing, man. No one escapes judgment, whether you, 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 the point is, whether you're alive or dead, you cannot escape the judgment of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. As it is written, all live unto the Father. There's no, really no such thing as death, because when we shed this mortal coil, we go into the spirit world, and there's a whole nother world, the spirit world, Okay. All right, so that being said, let's get into it. Isaiah 14 and 9. It says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Now, I got a whole lot of precepts here to explain the hell. Is that talking about uh, under the ground where you got the, the, the guy with the red suit with the pitchfork and everybody's screaming down there? No, that hell is talking about is a very low condition, as in slavery, because you. This Lucifer, which is really Esau, Edom, they're going into slavery, okay? 
beginning with the top banking families. They're going into slavery underneath us. That's the hell that is from beneath, that is moved to meet them at their coming. All right, like it says here, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming and stir up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth it have raised up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. Now, first I'm gonna prove what the hell is. And then I'm gonna show you that all the other nations that are in bed with Esau, politically wise, they're gonna come against Esau, okay? That's in the book of Obadiah. So first let's prove the hell part that this man is going into slavery. First, the book of Psalms 9 and 17, it says the wicked, now who's the wicked? Esau, Edom, Malachi 1 and 4, right? The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget the heavenly father because it ain't just Esau that's going into slavery, it's all the other nations too. They're going into slavery underneath us, us Israelites. Matter of fact, let's get to prove that. Let's get Jeremiah 30 and 16. Because we're royal people. Israelites are royal people. So royal people have subjects, man. I mean, how could they be royal if they don't have subjects? <laughs> uh, let's get Jeremiah 30 and 16. Royal people must have subjects. So we're going to have plenty of subjects in the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites. There's plenty of scriptures that prove that. Uh, here it is right here. J Jeremiah 30 and 16. It says, therefore, all they that devoured thee, as in the other nations that devoured us, took everything from us. The main nation that did that was the nation of Esau, Edom. All they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, they vocab. You can't get around this scripture. Okay, you can't tap down tap dance around this scripture jeremiah 30 and 16 therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thine adversaries you want to find out who our adversaries are you go to psalms the 83rd chapter it gives you a list of all our adversaries and it starts with esau edom it says the tabernacles of edom all thine adversaries every one of them every one of them shall go into captivity plain can't get around that that is the hell that's from beneath that's coming to meet this Lucifer, which is Esau, Edom, okay? Every one of them shall go into captivity, that's slavery. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoiled. Again, all the other nations that took everything from us, we're gonna take everything from them. And all that prey upon thee will I give for prey, all right? So that's uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16. Let me read the next verse for I will restore health unto thee because we're the ones that are sick right now. There's a, a what, what is that? Um, I think it's in Isaiah. It says the whole head is sick. Talking about our people. Our people are sick, man. Beginning of the so-called Negro all the way down to the so-called Mexican. Our people are sick. They need healing. Okay. For I will re restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds. The wounds that the Heavenly Father brought upon us for our wickedness. For our disobedience, he brought wounds upon us, the wound of slavery, the wound of oppression, right? So he's going to heal us, like it says here, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Exactly. All right? So there you go. Matter of fact, uh, let me bring in Deuteronomy 30 and 7. To follow up on that. Deuteronomy 30 and 7, which says this, uh, and the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies. And one of the main curses is, or the main curse is slavery. So all our enemies, uh, and the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee there you go so payback is coming man you know the saying payback is a b-i-t-c-h payback is a biatch all right so we're back in isaiah 14 right isaiah 14 and 9 it says, hell from, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. So let's talk about this hell here. I read um, 
Psalm 9 and 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget the heavenly father. Now let's go into it some more. I'm going to use the parable that Yahushua taught to show you that the hell is talking about captivity, slavery. This is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus represents us. The rich man represents Esau, Edom, Lucifer, the light bearer. Okay. This is Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. That's these top banking families now. The, the purple and the fine linen represents royalty. They're sitting in the power seat right now and fed sumptuously every day. There you go, the rich banking families. And Esau starts with them. That's why I keep zeroing on them. They're gonna make it through this destruction, but all the lower level Edomites are gonna be born to them. That's how all the Edomites are gonna go into slavery, okay? through them because they're first they're going to be the first ones to go into slavery there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar guess who the beggar is <laughs> named lazarus that's us and i think the name lazarus uh Iza Izar, Izar, which means the most high help so the heavenly father is going to help us us israelites there was a certain beggar named lazarus which was laid at his gate in his kingdom full of sores. Yeah, we got the sore of oppression. We got the sore of slavery. There's, um, you know what uh, links up with that? Uh, putrefying sores. Let me see if I can get that. What is that? Isaiah, first chapter. Yeah, man, we, we got, we're filled with sores. You know, the sore, the sore of uh, our families being broken up by this devil. The sore of feminism. Okay, it is right here. Oh, this is it. The book of uh, Isaiah 1 and 3. Let me start there. The ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. That's another saw that we suffer. You know, uh, for a long period of our life, not knowing who the hell we are, not having um, our true nationality, our true identity. We were told we were Negroes, then we were told we were black. No, first we were told we were uh, colored, then black, then Afro-American. <laughs> What's it going to be next? These are all sores, people. Not knowing you, who you are is a terrible thing, man. Not having your true nationality according to the Bible, that's nothing to joke about. But this is what happened to us as a nation. So this is why Isaiah 1 and 3 says the ox knows his owner. Now, ox is a stupid animal, but at least he knows his owner. And the ass is master's crib, another dumb animal donkey the ass but israel does not know what don't they know they don't know that the majority of our people don't know they're israelites and when you try to tell them and show them i ain't no israelite i ain't no israelite what are you going to do for an individual like that that's why it says but israel does not know my people does not consider they want to hold on to these corporate names that esau put on you as slaves when he gave you the title west india you want to hold on to that shit. that means you're a slave man you're still in the slave mentality. You want to hold on to Negro or, or black. Mostly you want to hold, hold on to black. And I've did many videos showing you the word black is a negative word. It means void of light. It means destructive. It means wicked, black, okay? But you want to hold on to that shit. That's why it says, but Israel does not know. Now, when you call yourself an Israelite or uh, Israel, Israel means in Hebrew, Yashur Allah, it means he's the prince of power. Isn't that better than calling yourself black? Isn't it better to call yourself an Israelite, which means he is the prince of power, than calling yourself black? You be the judge. But Israel does not know. This is why it is written, it's, it is high time for my people to wake up out of sleep. Who's the Lord's people? The Israelites. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Yeah, the majority of Israelites out there don't consider that they're Israelites. Even though we bring all the information before them, they still don't consider you know why? Because the Heavenly Father got him blinded, man. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the ninth verse goes into that. A portion of the Lord's people are going to be blinded until the destruction. Okay? That's in Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Because the Lord right now, he's only looking for the elect. Right? He's only looking for the elect. Let me keep reading. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. There you go. A seed of evil to us, children that are corruptors. They are forsaken the Lord. That's why our people are going through what they're going through. 
They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backward. <laughs> Years ago, you had um, you had this uh, uh, rap rap duo crisscross. You know, at the time they were two little kids. You know, but they were wearing their clothes backward, and that became a style, man. Some of y'all probably remember that shit. They had that big hit, um, wasn't it? Uh, jump, 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 right? Crisscross. They're wearing their clothes backwards, man. You might be able to see the video on YouTube. One of them passed away. The guy went out, he, he, he well, curse shall thou be when thou comest in, curse shall thou be when thou goest out. One of them, he went out, he went out in a bad way, okay? I think the other guy is still alive. The one that kind of looks like an Ephraimite. The, the one that looks like a Jake, he passed away, okay? But that's that's the scripture right there. <laughs> they had gone away backward. Only Jake could take a, a style of wearing your clothes backward and make the shit hit. This proves what Yahweh Shai said, that we're the salt of the earth. When them two little kids came out with that song, man, a lot of people were wearing their clothes backward. They had the uh, crisscross colors. I remember that shit. What is that, early 90s? Mid 90s. So there you go. So there's no people like us, man. Like the Lord said, a, a peculiar people. The word peculiar means strange. The fifth verse. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. There you go. And the whole heart faint. Me and no wisdom, no understanding. Right? Excuse me, it's six verse. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. Now here's the point. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. So this links up with Luke 16, where it says the, the, the beggar. Let me read 16 and 20 again. Luke 16 and 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which proved that's us, which was laid at his gate, Esau's gate, full of sores. These are the sores. Let's go to Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1 and 6. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, the head being Judah, there is no soundness in it. All you got to do is look at the madness of our people. You see there's no soundness in the things that they do. But wounds and bruises. What wounds? The wound of slavery. The wound of oppression. Cargo slave ships. The wound of feminism. All the shit that plague our people, man. Those are the wounds. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Now, putrefying sore is a sore that gets worse and worse and worse. And all you got to do is look at our people. They're getting worse and worse and worse. That's why Yahweh should have to come back and destroy, what, two-thirds of our people, which they're going to come back in the kingdom and set up the one-third and bring back his kingdom on the planet Earth. That's the remedy, okay? That's the only remedy. To, to remedy our wounds, our bruises, and our putrefying sores. They have not been closed, there you go, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. But now, for the elect, their wounds, their putrefying sores have been bound up. Through what? Through this truth. This is the ointment, okay? Like it says they're neither mollified with ointment. This knowledge, this truth is the ointment. This is the healing balm that heals us, okay? So that was Isaiah 1 and 6, right? So let's get back to Luke. <laughs> yeah, crush. Let me put, put my glasses on here. Crush Esau. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Crush Esau. Crush him. Uh, Luke 16 and 19. So uh, Luke 16 and 20. So luckily, there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. There you go and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's tables. And that's what you get. Like Bill Cosby, really what he got was crumbs. Oprah Winfrey, really what she got is crumbs. Okay? You'll never, ever in this man's kingdom reach as high as this man. Hell no. Okay? And as soon as you get too big for your britches, so to speak, you saw come in there, nigga, you're getting a little too big around here. We're going to have to, we're going to have to chop you down. Why? Because you jakes don't get it. This is this man's kingdom. Let him have his kingdom, man. Our kingdom is coming. Two kings cannot sit on one throne, okay? One king got to be booted off and the other king come and sit down on the throne, okay? 
So this is this man's kingdom. So let, I say, let him have his kingdom. His bullshit kingdom. I don't want his kingdom. His kingdom is polluted. Micah 2 and 10, arise and, and depart, for this is not your rest. <laughs> and furthermore, even if you make it in this man's society, as a so-called black man, say, let's say that, you, you're, you're always going to be... Uh, um, you're always going to be looked down upon just for the color of your skin, right? You're always going to be looked down upon. You're always going to be made fun of. As soon as you turn your back, they're going to make fun of you. You think they're going to make fun of us in our kingdom? Oh, hell no. We'll have the power to be able to read their thoughts. So we'll know when they try to make fun of us when we leave. Okay? Our kingdom is going to be something else, man. A whole nother level, baby. Anyway, uh, Luke 16 and 21 and desiring, that's the majority of our people, to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. That's what we're getting. Moreover, the dogs, those are the other nations, came and licked his sores. Right. Like, let me give you an example. You got the Moabites right in, right in the neighborhood selling you that dirty ass fried rice and uh, uh, fried chicken and whatever. They're, they're playing on our oppression because Esau gave them... The, the power to be able to do that. Esau set them up. All these so-called Chinese restaurants, you see, where they where they get the loans, where they get the money from Esau. And that's the scripture. The dogs came and licked his sword. So they're playing on our oppression, all the other nations. Okay. That's why when Esau go down, they're gonna go down right along with him. Okay? And it's beautiful, man. Um uh, the 22nd verse, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. This is after his kingdom is destroyed. That's what that means. The rich man also died and was buried. Yeah, the destruction of Esau's kingdom that Yahweh is coming with. Now, here's the point. The 23rd verse, and in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments. What does that mean? Does that mean he's underground and the man with the red suit, the pitchfork is, is, is tormenting him? No, people, this is talking about in the future. He's going into slavery. He's in hell. He's in captivity. This rich man, right? Like Psalm 19, 9 and 7, 17 says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget the heavenly father. There you go. So Luke 16 and 23, and in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments, <laughs> catching that whip. Okay, he catching that, whatever, that boot. Whatever we got, man, he catching that hell from not only us, he's going to catch hell from the other nations, and he's going to catch hell, which they're going to be in slavery right along with him. And he's going to catch hell from the animals that he to once tormented in his kingdom. Some animals that he almost made extinct. All right, even the animals are going to get their revenge on, the, on this devil, man. I honestly don't know, well... You know, every time I say that, Apostle Todd says, look, brother, Lord, go put the spirit on him to make, to make it. I don't know how he's going to make it, man. But like Elder Apostle Todd says, the Lord go, go put the spirit on him to deal with it, okay? I mean, he, Esau is just going to be catching it from, from all, just like we're catching it in his kingdom. He's going to be catching it from all angles, man. <laughs> That's what it means here. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and see if Abraham afar off, and <laughs> notice it says afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Yeah, we're going to be comforted, okay? We're going to be comforted, man. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. So this is what is meant by Isaiah 14, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. Now you understand what that means, using this parable here parable of the rich man and Lazarus and he cried saying Luke 16 and 24 father Abraham have mercy on me so now this devil wants mercy what, what does the scripture say uh, that showed no mercy he ain't gonna get no mercy uh, bear with me for me I'm gonna find that scripture was it James yeah there it is James 2 and 13 let's read that it says for he shall have judgment without mercy. <laughs> so Esau's, there's going to be judgment brought upon Esau, that's slavery, without mercy, right? For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So he ain't going to get no mercy, right? 
That's why I say I don't know how he's going to deal with it, but he's going to deal with it. So now, now this punk ass Esau crying for mercy now. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. As these bankers, they're going to be crying for mercy when they feel the sting of slavery, the perpetual sting coming from us. They're going to beg for mercy. <laughs> Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame, meaning this hell, this captivity that's going to be thrust upon them. Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. 25th verse, Luke 16 and 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Yeah, like now. They're getting the good things. They're getting all the goodies. Beginning with the top banking families, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Gettys. You're getting all the goodies, man. They're living, like it said in the parable, fed sumptuously every day. Okay, and at the same time, they were in the power of rulership, so they were tormenting everybody else. So now it's their time to be tormented, and they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to take it. They want mercy. They don't get no freaking mercy. All right? But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, the curses. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. It speaks about the curses the Lord will put on us Israelites for being disobedient. And then the Lord used Esau to punish us. What did King David say? Deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay? So this so-called white man was set up to punish us. His kingdom was set up to punish us. America was set up to punish us. That's why the word America means bitter. We're really, in reality, we're really not supposed to make it big big over here. Like you had that group Wham, Joe, uh, Andrew Ridgely, George Michael. Their, their first album was Make It Big. That's where that song came, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go. Came from that album, Make It Big. And they did make it big. But guess what? We wasn't brought here in America to make it big. And those that did make it big, what the scripture said, warn to you, you have received your consolation. We're really supposed to go under those curses. Remember the mentality of Micah. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, the curses, because I have sinned against him. That is the mentality we're really supposed to have. Deal with it like a man. Man up. I'll deal with the curses, Lord, because I, 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 I deserve to have those curses upon me because I sinned against you. That's the mentality to have, okay? That's called a, a man's mentality. A man deals with responsibility, okay? So Luke 16 and 25, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Going back to Isaiah, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. There you go. That is the precept that lines with that. Luke 16 and 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. See? And that's how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven, man. And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix. Now, I looked that word up, uh, gulf, it means separation. So Esau can never come to our side, and we can never go to his side. This proves that the Heavenly Father is a separatist. Like it says here, there's a great gulf fix, separation. So that day which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence, right? Nations do not integrate. Nations are separate. Okay? So that's pretty much it. I mean, I could go further, but I don't want to spend too much time on that. We're already half at the half hour mark. I got just a lot of scriptures to go through. All right, so let's get back to, uh, okay, we're done with Luke. We proved the point of hell. Let's get one more. Well, let's get a couple more. Isaiah 24, 21 to 22. Let's read that. Now, what I'm doing is explaining to you what it means hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Let's talk about the, the slavery that Esau is going to go into. Let's read Isaiah 24 
and 21 and 22, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. Lucifer, the light bearer. The top banking family, starting with them. And then their minions underneath them, their lower level priesthood. Remember, the scripture have said there's an order. Okay? So it makes sense. It says, the uh, how's it go? Um, uh, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. So right now, they're the first. So they're going to be last. The first of Esau is going to be the first ones to go into slavery. That's what you're banking for. Right? So in a, essentially, the first is going to be last. They're going to be on the bottom. All right? They know this. They know this. They know they're going into slavery. Isaiah 24 and 21, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. They are the kings of the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. So they're going to be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit shall be shut up in prison or in the prison and after many days shall they be visited so we're going to grab them up shackle them up and throw them into prison or throw them into a pit they like to throw us our people in the prison don't they so we go man we're going to get our revenge man we are going to get our revenge and then some man <laughs> let's let's read psalm 149 right psalm 149 and 5 let the saints be joyful in glory. Who's the, who, who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites. That's who the saints are. Psalm 148 proves this. Let me just go back one chapter. Psalm 148, 13 and 14. Let them praise the name of the Lord, which his name is Yahweh. All praises. The son's name is Yahweh Shai. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. Yeah, his name is Yahweh. The son's name is Yahweh Shai. His glory is above the earth in heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the seed of his people, the power of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. Those are the saints. A people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. How you get around that, man? So who are the saints? The Israelites beginning with the elect. So, let's go back to Psalm 149 and 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Why are we going to be joyful in glory? Because we're going to be ruling. No more hell, man. No more affliction. No more captivity. No more oppression. And that's what this kingdom is to us. It's oppression. It's captivity. It's, it's hell. That's what it is. Okay? Tell you like it is, man. Sixth verse, let the high praises of the heavenly father be in their mouth. Well, what is that? This knowledge, this truth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. We're literally, we're literally going to have a two-edged sword in the kingdom. And we're going to be very efficient and very proficient with it. We're going to be experts with that sword. Okay? Hey, Peter was a, he was a sword expert. And he cut the air of, of the high priest's servant. When they came to Resi Hawashai, his name was Malchus. Peter did the snip snip, man. The air, the air fell to the ground. Hawashai picked the air up and put it, slapped it right back on that dude's head. Healed him instantly. Oh man, we got a great history, man. Psalm 149 and 6. Let the high praises of the Heavenly Father be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hands. So we're literally going to have a two edged sword. By the way, this is in the Old Testament, and this prophecy hasn't even been fulfilled yet. For you dudes that say, oh, I don't deal with the Old Testament. We only deal with the New Testament. You guys are retarded, man. The scriptures, read Matthew 13 and 52. Bear with me for a minute. Read Matthew 13 and 52. Someone put that in the comment section. It says, every scribe instructed uh, is instructed to the old as well as the new. Anyway, uh, the seven verse, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. 
to bind their kings with chains. Now, back in Isaiah, we read that they're going to be gathered together as prisoners. Prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. See? So the precept that lines up with that is Psalm 149. To bind an ape. To bind their kings with chains. That is these top banking families. All the elite of the other nations. Right? Things new and old. All the elite of the other nations are all going to be rounded up by us. <clears throat> the Lord's hopeful elect. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Slavery is coming back in a big way, brothers. And you few sisters that watch these videos, you better be damn glad you're able to understand this truth. Because this is going to be the new normal. This is, this is where the future is going. Okay? Slavery is coming back in a big way. And we're going to be the recipients of it. We're going to be at the helm of it. Slavery. <laughs> and we're going to be the new slave masters. <laughs> to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. How you get around that? To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. So it's going to be an honor to slap chains on our enemies, beginning with Esau, Edom, beginning with the these top banking families. What an honor is going to be to be able to slap chains on them, kick them in the ass, the so-called fake-ass British royalty. We're going to start with them, okay? Because they have no business sitting in the seat of royalty. And I hope they see this, man. I hope they do, okay? Because they're not the real British and they're not the real royalty, okay? The word British means man of the covenant. They ain't the men of the covenant. They broke the covenant. I'm talking about the Edomites, Okay? To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints praise ye the Lord. What's the judgment written? Let's read the judgment. <laughs> Inside joke. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. Let's read the judgment. It is right here. Here's the judgment. If any man have an ear, let him hear. <laughs> He that leadeth into captivity, and you top banking families, you were responsible for our captivity. You helped finance the slave ships. We know the history. You can't hide anymore. You're being exposed, boy. That's what's happening. You're being exposed, and there's nothing you can do about it. I did a video on the, the moon landing. Even that was exposed. And the Lord put the spirit on Stanley Kubrick to expose. He was the... He was the... He was the... Uh, mastermind behind that whole thing the setup the stage everything there's footage of him walking around the stage looking proud like yeah i set this up i brought this into fruition he had that air with that he, he saw it and in the latter years he was all fucking messed up looking haggard and tagged <laughs> hitting the bottle like it owed him money right <laughs> stanley kubrick before he passed away, he revealed it totally. It was, it, was a, it was a hoax. You know, he set it up. Okay? This is where we at with it. Esau, you're being exposed, man. Every strata of your society is being exposed, Esau, and there's nothing you can do about it. There ain't a goddamn thing you can do about it. This is your manifest destiny. Like you made fun about the, the so-called North American Indian, you... you there's in that movie um what's the name of that movie geronimo i think it's geronimo with uh, the actor west studi there's a scene the guy who played uh custer which custer was hired by the rothschilds one thing that proves that is the grave of custer or either next to his grave there's the red shield the same shield you see on i-95 because the rothschilds own i-95 the shield that same shield is, is either it's on Custer's grave or near his grave. A plaque, you'll see it, which lets me know Custer was hired by the Rothschilds. George Armstrong Custer. Well, Custer made a statement, at least in that movie. I'm pretty sure he said it. He said that the so-called North American Indian, this is their manifest destiny. I Meaning it's our time to take them down and rule over them. He said that. Well, guess what? Now we're saying to you, this is your manifest destiny. 
it's time for you to go down and we rule over you. And that's that scripture where it says, a troop shall overcome Gad, but at the end, Gad shall overcome. Gad is the so-called North American Indians. So you so-called North American Indians, you're going to get your revenge and then some over this devil for taking you down, stealing your land. That's our message to you. And you are our brothers. You are of the tribe of Gad, of the nation of Israel. There you go, man. Revelation 39 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go <laughs> into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. There's that word again, saints. Who are the saints? Us Israelites. This is what we patiently wait for. This is our hope. As the Apostle Paul said, we are prisoners of hope. So there you go, man. See how powerful these scriptures is? Hey, you, you so-called Negroes, you still think this that the Bible is a white man's book? Huh? You still think that? <laughs> Why y'all reading that Bible? That Bible is a white man book. Shut up, nigga. I got to say it like that because you, you're too fucking stupid, man. This Bible condemns the so-called white man, okay? This Bible is the beginning of the end for his society, his kingdom. All right, so let's get back to... Let's get back to Psalm 149. Let's read that again. So what I'm proving is the part where it says hell from beneath. I haven't even left the ninth verse yet. That's why I told you there's so many pro uh, precepts. But once I leave the ninth verse, I'm just going to fly right through it. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, Psalm 149, proving the hell again. Five to nine. Let's read it again. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Heavenly Father be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. That's slavery. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. I read the judgment that's in Revelation 13, 9 and 10. The judgment is slavery. Now, here, I'm just going to go right to the point, Ezekiel 39 and 14, because one of the first jobs of these top banking families is to bury the bodies, the dead bodies that's going to be over there in the Middle East after World War III. This is it right here, Ezekiel 39 and 14, future prophecy. And they shall serve out men of continual employment. Employment, when you look it up, it means slave. Look it up. For those of you that like to boast about you being an employee, well, not an employee, but you, you yeah, uh, employee and uh, employed. You say, uh, I'm employed by this company. You just said that you're a slave. That's what the word employ means. Employment, employ means slave. Look it up, it's from the Latin. Look up the root word. And they shall serve out men of continual employment. So that's your slaves. Passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth right after World War III. That's gonna be the first job of these top banking families. Which, think about it, they haven't done a hard day's work since what, the Bourget family, right? Their descendants. They haven't done a hard day's work since then. <laughs> and that's going back to the 1300s. So they've been out of practice. But that's all right. They're going to get they're going to get back into practice very soon. They're going to know what hard work is all about. Okay? Physical hard work. And that's that's part of the scripture. Hell from beneath them is moved to meet the at that coming. The prophecy in Ezekiel 39 and 14. And they shall serve out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers, those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. So this is the future prophecy after the destruction. Over there in the Middle East, you're going to have tons of bodies, dead bodies from World War III. Who's going to bury, bury those bodies to cleanse the earth? We, we ain't going to do it. We're going to be in power, man. We're going to have, have our subjects to do it. Start with Esau. <laughs> you remember the ones that we chained up and threw in the pit? They're the ones that's going to be doing it. There you go, man. Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at that coming. All right, so that was uh, uh, the last scripture to prove the, the hell part. Let's get back to Isaiah 14. So now we're going to read. Oh, one more thing I got to prove. Hell from beneath, Isaiah 14 and 9. Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even the, all the chief ones of the earth that have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Because the nations are going to come against Esau during World War III. They're going to fight against Esau. And that, that is, uh, the proof is Obadiah 1 and 6. 
Let's start there. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought out? All the men of that confederacy, you know, not just Esau, Edom, but all the other men that, that is working with Esau to bring that so-called new world order, right? All the men of that confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee, like the Moabites, and, and uh, who else? Um, um, the Ishmaelites, right? All the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. So they're, they're going to turn into reservoir dogs. They're going to fight each other. Okay? And, that, and, and while they're fighting each other, World War Three, that's when Yahweh Shai is going to show up with those chariots and the angels. And he's going to put an end to all, 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 all that madness. Okay? Um, they that eat thy bread have laid a wound again under thee, and there is none understanding in him. The eighth verse, shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau, the wise men out of Edom, Lucifer, the light bearer. It's so plain, man. Okay, let's get back to Isaiah 14. So now you understand Isaiah 14 and 9. Let's go into the 10th verse. All day, all day, all day shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Yeah, like the so-called white man, he's become weak like the other nations. Because the other nations have what? They have the bomb. So the playing field has been leveled. Okay? Esau ain't the only one with the bomb. All the other nations, they got the bomb too. And they don't mind using it. So that's one example where they uh, Esau has become as weak as them. So Esau can throw his weight around like he did back in the past. Okay? His power is slowly being brought down. That's the point. All they, all they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? <laughs> Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. Now, the scriptures tell us about the pride of Esau. You see the word pomp, another word for that is pride, man. If we go back to the same book, Obadiah, Obadiah 1 and 3, it says this. Well, let me start the first verse. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord, concerning Edom, Esau, so-called white man, beginning with the top banking families. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and ambassador sent among the heathen, arise, arise ye, and let us rise up against it in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, the other nations. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. And they call themselves what? Caucasian. Caucasian means cave dweller. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock whose habitation is high, that's safe in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? The first part is what we should look at. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. So it's the same thing we read in Isaiah, thy pomp, right? Thy pomp, Isaiah 14 and 11, thy pomp is brought down to the grave. So it ain't talking about the spiritual demon Satan. This Lucifer is talking about Esau, Edom. This is how you prove it. Isaiah 14, 11, thy, thy pomp is brought down to the grave. They be, they're being brought down. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread unto thee, right? The corrosion of his kingdom, his, his infrastructure is falling apart, okay? The infrastructure alone in America is falling apart, and they can't keep up with it. That's what it means, the worm is spread unto thee, and the worms cover thee, corrosion. Now here is the 12th verse. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now there's a scripture where the Lord said a whole city would be brought to hell because of its pride. There's the book of Matthew 11 and 23. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. Now wait a minute. How can you bring a whole city into hell? This hell is talking about as a low estate. All right? Matthew 11 and 23, and thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto the, un, until this day, because the Capernaum rejected the mighty works of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and his mighty words. Yahweh Shai said they would be brought down to hell, meaning destruction. That's what that means. So that's what's coming for Esau, Edom, Mr. Lucifer. Destruction. How art thou fallen from heaven? Rulership. Remember, we read in the parable, the rich man fed sumptuously every day. Remember that? 
Well, there you go. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, O light bearer, light of wickedness? So the Lord is being facetious. He said, how are you fallen? What happened? <laughs> what happened to your power? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, <laughs> light bearer? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? And I gave you plenty of examples how they, their philosophies, the philosophy of Esau, how he weakened the nations to the point where the nations are going to get mad. As a matter of fact, what is that? Revelation? The nations were angry and thy wrath has come. The nations are going to get mad and go after Esau. They're going to be sick and tired of his shit. All right? Let's read on. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. They did that with their space program. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. We're the congregation, and they're sitting right on top of us, the rulership. In the sides of the north. Where where are we? We're in North America. Okay. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. All you got to do is read uh, Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, goes into that. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, starting at the third verse, all proving that Esau has the men. He has a God-like complex. He has a God-like mentality. He has a God complex. He thinks he's God. That's why he put up his face as God, the Son of God. He put up his face as the angels. <laughs> you can't get around it, man. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. There it is again, slavery. The parable of the rich man, okay? Thou shalt be brought down to hell, 15 verse, to the sides of the pit. And I just, wait a minute, I just read to you the pit. When it literally, let's, let's read it again, Isaiah 24 and 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. I ain't talking about the spiritual demon Satan. You can't put him in no pit. The spiritual demon Satan has his, has his place, which is in the heavens. <laughs> All right? His job is to stir up evil. Okay? And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. The same thing that Isaiah 14 says. Right? Yet, Isaiah 14 and 15, yet thou, yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee, the 16th verse, shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man? So that lets you know right there, that ain't talking about the spiritual demon Satan. It says, is this the man? Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Yeah, the so-called white man with his technology, with his, his war machine, okay? A good example is Nagasaki, Hiroshima. He made the earth to tremble. Spiritual demon didn't drop bombs on Nagasaki and, and Hiroshima. Huh? <laughs> this so-called white man did, man. Beginning with their top banking families. All right? They want to send a message. So, this, so when Esau goes down, all the other nations are going to look at him like, you? Because they're going to look so pitiful, man. There's a scripture in Job where it says they're going to look so pitiful, not even their widows are going to want them, their wives. That's how pitiful the so-called white man is going to look in the kingdom, man. <laughs> My goodness. Anyway, um, 16 verse, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness? I gave you an example, Hiroshima. You can go see the film. They show you the before and after. After that bomb dropped, that city was evaporated. Okay, so there's your example. That made the world as a wilderness. Who's the one going, going around the earth chopping down the trees? Hey, if this man was allowed to continue, indeed he would make the world a wilderness. Because he's, I don't know what it is with him and trees. He just doesn't like the trees. You know, he got something against the trees. He's always cutting them down. You got something called deforestation. Look it up. What is with Esau and the trees? What has the trees ever done to you, Esau, that, that you got this fetish for cutting down trees? And we need to show you how stupid this man is. That's why Job said they're children of fools, basemen. We need the trees to breathe. The trees produce oxygen, man. Yeah, the cave dweller. Yeah, him. 
Oh my goodness. That made the world as a wilderness, Isaiah 14 and 17, and destroyed the cities thereof that openeth not the house of his prisoners. Yeah, like our people, he would put our people in prison for the slightest of things and give them long bids, long sentences, which prison in itself is totally wicked. Deprive that man of, of the natural use of a woman, turning the men over there in these prisons into homosexuals. And then they, then they make jokes about it. This man got to go, man. You, gotta, you know, when you process all that stuff, you get fiery mad, man. You just want to explode, man. I understand why you always see movies, right, where the aliens, they come and invade the earth. And the first thing the aliens are destroying people because <laughs> they look around and say, man. And the aliens are who? They're the angels. OK. And indeed, the aliens are coming to destroy the society. All right. I'll call them later. Um. Yeah, so 17 verse, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, and openeth not the house of his prisoners. I already explained that. Going into the 18 verse, all the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, everyone in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the remnant of them on those that are slain, because what's the future of uh, Esau? He's gonna like we like we always say he's gonna be Obadiah one nineteen. Obadiah one nineteen. Let's get that. Obadiah one nineteen. That's the future of Esau because because they, they're gonna after a thousand years of slavery they're gonna be rounded up and <laughs> set on fire. Obadiah 1 and 18, and, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord have spoken it. That's a future prophecy. Obadiah 1 and 18. So they're going to be rounded up after a thousand years of slavery, rounded up and set on fire. That's going to be you. That's why in Job it says, the eye that see him. Let's get that. You ain't going to see no no Edomite after a thousand years of slavery. You ain't going to see no more Edomites in the kingdom. The eye that see him. You still think that this Bible is a white man's book? <laughs> the eye that see. There it is right here. Job 7 and 8. It's talking about Esau, Edom. Okay, no, that's not the one I want. Bear with me for a minute. It's not one. I might have worded it wrong. I think it's in Job 20. Let me see. Yeah, Job 20. Yep, this is it. Job 20. Somebody might have put it in the comment section. Job 20 and 9. That's the one I want. Job 20 and 8. Let me start there. Ah, man. Job, wow, oh my goodness, Job 20 and 5, let me start there, that the triumphant of the wicked is short, yeah, the triumph, we're in the triumphant of the wicked now, the wicked is Esau, Edom, they have triumphed over us, they're in power, but right, well, let me start the fourth verse so it makes sense, knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, or placed upon earth, that the triumphant of the wicked is short, Esau is the wicked, Malachi 1 and 4, and the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment, and he's the hypocrite. This is his joy. This bullshit that we're that we're that we're slaves to, right? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, there you go, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever, like his own dung. Yeah, like when you go to the bathroom and you and you you you, you, sh you shit in the bathroom and you flush the toilet, you don't see the shit no more. There you go. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? And that's what I'm telling you. In the kingdom, after a thousand years of slavery, you ain't going to see Esau no more. Because Obadiah, he's going to be Obadiah 1 and 18. He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Because let's, let's, 
let's deal with the fact that he has leprosy. Hey, the way the so-called white man looks, he's not supposed to look that way. That's not, he doesn't look human. Human, hue means color. Hue man, color man. We're supposed to have the royal color, man. This is the royal color, baby. We come from the earth. We come from the ground. What color is the ground? Deep dark brown. So this man is the anomaly. This man is the freak. Okay? He's the oddball of the planet earth. So after a while, we won't see him no more. Like high priest Ariel used to say, I get mad when I don't see you with your chains on. Talking about Esau. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, Job 20 and 7, yet he shall perish forever like his, own, like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye, here's the part, Job 20 and 9, the eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. What's his place? Rulership. He ain't going to be ruling no more. Isaiah 14 and 21, prepare slaughter for his children, that they do not rise nor possess the cities. Come on, man. Come on. Man. Come on, man. Now you see why in slavery, if a slave was caught reading the Bible, they were instantly put to death. Now you know why. Because the truth is in that book. That's where the truth is, in the Bible. Ask yourself why. Why was a slave put to death when he, if he was caught reading the Bible? Why? Because our nationality is in that book. The truth is in that book of why we're in this condition. Who put us in this condition? Who they are according to the Bible? All of that's in the book. Hey, the book of Eli. <laughs> Remember the, the role that uh, Gary Oldman played? I got to have that book. The power is in that book. What book do you think he was talking about? He wasn't talking about the Keeper Negas. <laughs> he wasn't talking about the Egyptian Book of the Dead. He was talking about the Bible, the most powerful book on the planet Earth. Anyway, let me go back to Isaiah. We're going to wrap it up past the hour mark. So we're in Isaiah 14 and uh, 19. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. I'm going to read to the 23rd verse. Uh, and as the remnant of those that are slain thrust thrust through thrust through with a sword and go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. He said, go look terrible, man. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers, Esau, Edom, shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. Yeah, the Lord's going to do that through the missiles and the chariots. That's why Yahweh is coming, okay, to destroy their kingdom. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. That lines up with Isaiah 34, where America is going to become a desert. Possession for the bittern. Look up bittern. A bittern is a small wild bird. Wild birds are going to dwell over here. After the fire dies down, you're going to have wild creatures dwelling here in America, all across America. America is going to be one big, vast desert. Even in the movie Planet of the Apes, it was called what? The Forbidden Zone. Okay? Check that movie out. I will also make it a possession for the bidden and pools of water. I will sweep it with the... <laughs> With the besom of destruction, say of the Lord of hosts. That's that nuclear fire sweeping across the land, like you saw in Terminator 2. Was, you know, the chick who played Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton, had that dream and you saw the wall of fire sweeping across the land. That's the future of America. So there it is, man. That's Lucifer. That's the end of uh, the lesson. Because it goes in the 24th verse, goes, goes into something else. Um, so there you go. This, this proves that. I hope that Benjamin saw this. Uh, this proves that this Lucifer is talking about the so-called white man. We saw you know, beginning with the top banking families. So that being said, hopefully you brothers and your sisters were uh, edified. And uh, I'll see you in the next uh, lesson. Uh, great lesson, Apostle. Hey, well, the water. All praises to you. Once again, hopefully you all were edified. And so on to the next one. Shall one for